Go. I'm all set, Dave. Yes. All good. It's okay. Well, yep. anyway, everybody, happy St. Patty's Day. And uh, what, a, what a great day St. Patty's Day is. Uh, it's one of my favorite days. Probably my most favorite day is Groundhog Day, but uh, St. Patty's Day is important too. The only thing is an embarrassment here is there is absolutely no one here this evening in green, <laughs> except maybe Nazar a little bit. Look, a little green. Yes. But look at this. That's, that's an embarrassment. Look at. Oh, that's a shame. Look. Did you see? Just show them. Look, there's nothing. You know. Anyway, and then we have our musicians over here. Not one of them are in green. And there's Stevie Wonder. There he is. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's uh, it really is nice to be able to be here with you. It, it's been a kind of a tough, uh, tough week for sure. Uh, and today was a little bit hard. We can't most we can't have any singers up because it's just too dangerous. And actually, uh, it's hard even leaving here. Um, but anyway, it's just good to be here, and uh, it's good to celebrate St. Patty's Day with you. Uh, I. I think back on some of the wonderful, we had, about two years ago, we had a really nice party here on St. Patty's Day. But anyway, uh, I remember when I was almost newly ordained, uh, my good friend Joe Lydon doesn't remember this, but we were in a place called uh, the Black Rose in Boston. And it was an Irish bar, and they gave free drinks to priests on St. Patty's Day. And I think I was the only priest there, but I, I kept blessing people and marrying them it took the whole day there but anyway uh, but it's 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 good to celebrate this day uh even though to be quite honest with you uh, i look at my my own family all my grandparents came from ireland my, my they all came from the city of galway and i remember when i was very very small my one irish grandmother lived with us in her house but what i noticed about my family and i have a feeling it's everybody's the same uh, the Irish, to be honest with you, we, we love sad stories. We really do. We love sad stories. And a place like Haiti, like we're really in love with Haiti because it's like everything's doom and gloom. And uh, I think we love to suffer too. Although I know I do. Uh, I like to suffer. Like I have this, I have this like uh, walker. I don't really need it, but it's been wonderful for me because people come up and say, Ah, uh, you're ha it's really hard for you, isn't it, Faton? Oh yeah, yeah, I suffer. And then all the time, but I don't really need it. But I love to suffer, and I think we all do. I, I, I love getting the emails from people. Oh, it must be really hard for you right now in Haiti. I love all that, you know. And I say right back, I go, yeah, it's been hard for me and suffering's my middle name. Matter of fact my first name is probably uh, uh, long long suffering. Anyway. But with in regards to all that, it's uh, it's actually a wonderful day, and to all all my brothers and sisters who celebrate the Irish heritage, uh, I just wish you have a great day. And other than that, we we do have some here, uh, some of our team. We have Richie over there. If you want to look, Richie, Nazar. Oh, we have our good friend from the radio station, and we have uh, we have Samuel. Everybody's here, and. Uh, I think uh, Reginald was here. Reginald's the one that's been kind of guarding us. Reginald stays up every night with three other guys just to protect us. But anyway, I think he, he just took off for a minute. But anyway, uh, it's good to be here and it's good to celebrate Eucharist with you. So my friends, every, every time we celebrate Mass, I, I, I kind of ask you to see the Mass as not a spectacle, but more as something mysterious in a sense that we participate in some ways we're at the last supper we're at the foot of the cross we're we're, we're right there with jesus and and he's saying do this in my memory he's breaking bread which is a universal sign of acceptance he looks at us and he says i love you you do the same with others so with that spirit in mind we begin in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit amen and may the peace and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you.
So we place ourselves in the presence of God, mindful of the great love He has for each and every one of us, a love that is absolute and unconditional. Lord, you're the source of all beauty. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You're the source of the bond of love that binds us all together. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're the source of the gift of faith that makes us strong. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in all of us here, forgive us our sins, and bring us to a life that will never end. Let us pray. Lord, God, we thank you for the gift of this new day. We thank you for your presence here. Lord God, help us to be able to reach out to all people. Help us to be able to see the goodness and beauty in every human being. And we beg you, Lord, especially here in Haiti, that you bring peace to this troubled place. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Our first reading, I think, will be from, uh, I guess, David. David would do it from the Old Testament. Yes. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, where they broke my covenant and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will make my law with, within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer they, will they have to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. friends, we'll now ask our good friend Samuel to come and read from the New Testament. Reading from the book of Hebrew. In the days when Christ Jesus was in flesh, he offered prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence son thought he was he learned obedience from what he suffered and when he was made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him word of the lord samuel thank you Thank you. 
My good friends, the Lord be with you. The Gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. And when he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, nor is it for God God's glory, that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. And on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again on the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. The gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, my good friends, we believe that whenever the gospel is proclaimed, our loving God is communicating to us. And actually, we believe that our loving God is continually communicating in so many different ways. But we know that He has just, in some ways, touched us with this gospel. And what He's really kind of inviting us to do is to consider consider that he is he was really truly absolutely human you see a lot of times especially in our own religious education there's been a lot of emphasis obviously on the divinity of christ but sometimes we have to focus more on what was human in jesus it was absolutely 100 percent human there's a wonderful uh, series out now i only saw a couple episodes but i know many of you have seen it I think a lot of it is called the Chosen. And the Chosen really kind of gets us to realize uh, just that how Jesus was a human being. And Jesus wept, as the Gospel says today. He cried. But also Jesus laughed and sang. Jesus probably, we know probably at the marriage feast of Cain, he was doing the, the line dances and singing and, and joking with his friends. I think Jesus knew all the emotions that we have. Jesus probably suffered from anxieties at times and, and was concerned about a lot of different things. He, he certainly felt the pain of being misunderstood and maybe being rash judged. And, and Jesus today, we see him really aching for his friends, really feeling for them. And the, the, the challenge here for us is that we too, our Lord God, may send to us I'm sure he has at times. Someone who has just lost a dear friend or maybe a, a dear relative. And we may be the only one there for that person. And, and in a way we have to imitate Jesus and, and really feel the pain of that person. Really, really feel the loss that that person is experiencing. I know sometimes we tend to, let's, let's change the subject, let's try to cheer this person up. No. You should look at that person and say, all that you enjoyed in life, you will never lose. You love that person dearly. And now that person will always be a part of your life. Believe that. Believe that, that your loved one, whoever it may be, is and not was. Believe that our loving God has taken that person and has given him a new life. And I think this is what we have to do be able to share with people that we come in contact with who maybe have lost a loved one. 
I remember when I was at Lafayette College and I was a chaplain there, there was a young man, his name was David Nalvin. He used to take my dog home on the weekends when I used to have to go away. And David was killed in a auto accident. And his father often, after the funeral, for almost several years while I was still at the school, he would drive a long distance and come and we'd go out for lunch. And one day he said to me, as we're sitting across the table, he said, you probably wonder why I come all this way. I said, I'll tell you why. He said, because sitting across from you is so comforting because you're the only one I know who speaks as if David is my David and David, not David was. He said, and I want to believe that so much myself. And I think we have to be able to communicate that to others. We have to be able to say, yes, you know, uh, your, your husband, your, your wife, your mother, your friend, your brother is, is and not was. And in a way, that's what Jesus was even communicating to Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha. And he was also sharing with them his own struggles, his own pain, because they were in pain. And I think, you know, in my own experience as a priest over the years, sometimes the only thing you can do is just take a person's hand and hold it while they're going through this difficult time. And say, listen, you know, he is and not was. I, I love the story of uh, Bernard, uh, who's the, uh, the music composer, uh, 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 Bern, or, uh, trying to think of what it is. Uh, anyway, he... Uh, what are you trying to think of? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. He, um, he's, he wrote all these great... Who's that talking now? It's Doug. I thought it's great. Oh, <laughs> Irving Berlin, that's who it was. Who? Uh, Irving Berlin. Okay, uh, gotcha. His first wife only lived about five months. She contracted typhoid fever in Cuba and she would die. But he would write a song. And after he would talk open about her death, he'd say, that song has ended, but the melody will continue to linger. And I think that's something really beautiful, that, that yes, the song has ended, but she will always be a part of it. That melody will always be a part. And I think that's the way we have to, we have to look at, at the people that we have lost. Here, uh, and Doug uh, can agree with you here, this, this could be a very hard place at times only because there's so many memories. Just just a month ago, young David was standing at this altar with me, and now he was murdered a, a month ago. Yeah, uh, and yeah. you, think about that, you think of how I used to joke with him at times, and one of the things, he's always worried about my welfare, and I used to say, uh, I'm going out now for a walk, it would be like 10 o'clock, I'm like, you can't go out now, it's too <laughs> dangerous. But it's not just him, Doug, it's, it's Dr. Fon Fon. Oh yeah, one? come on. Doctor he was, uh, you know, the, the Nelson and... and, and so almost a dozen else. people that were close to us, at least. Yeah, and in a way, our faith is that they are still here. They're with us in so many different ways. I know one of the things is my mother died in 1995. But you know what? I still pray to her all the time. I say, Lord, Mom, help me out when I need to. And so this is what the kind of a lesson is in, in today's Mass or the readings today to say that our Lord may be sending us someone, but we have, He really wants us to share with them and comfort them. But the best way we can comfort them is saying, hey, your loved one is and not was. And, he, and that loved one will always be there because of me. And I think uh, this, can, this could be really a great comfort to people. When I look out now, I, as a matter of fact, today I was going through a book, and it just the, I kind of think our good friend Ann O'Donnell's here. But if you are Ann, I just happened to open up a drawer and found this little uh, memento memorial of your mom. She died in uh, 2006. And uh, we, we even have her name and your dad's name in our little chapel there. As so yeah, Anne's here, Tom. Anne's with us. Oh, that's great. All right. Well, yeah. in our little chapel, the Lord in, in the gospel, he said, in, in my house, there's a house for everybody. So in our little chapel, we have little houses. We have one for... John Henderson and Susie Trowbridge and uh, Stephen Lomax and Ed Isby and and there's one for uh, uh, Bernie uh, Bernie Brennan and you know if you, any of you are here today like Rita Ed is and Stephen is and and, and Jim Trowbridge Susie is and 
Peggy, if you're with us today, you know, John Henderson's with Peggy's you. Peggy's here. Yeah, John is too. And I, I think this right. is what we have to be looking at today. Uh, Michelle, Michelle Miller is with us, Larry. You got to believe that. And all these other people that have, we have known and loved are very much still a part of us and always will be. And I think that when, when you truly love someone on this earth, that person will be a part of you for the rest of your life. And the mysterious of our faith is that uh, our loving God has a place for each and every one of us. And uh, someday we'll all be together again. Doug, do you have anything you'd like to say or anything? Uh, well, I kind of got, got in a little bit late, Tom. Um, had a nice dinner with my family. My, my daughter's having uh, having a baby on the 1st of April. And uh, so we got together with Julie and her. And you know what Julie said to me at dinner? I got a nice self-help book for you. <laughs> a nice what? I have a nice self-help book for you. <laughs> what, 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 how do you respond to that? <laughs> well, anyway. Um, I, I, suffer, I, just, I think suffering is a key, a key thing. I mean, Thomas Merton said... That those the thing that we a lot of people learn too late is that those who try the hardest to avoid suffering are the ones who end up suffering the most. And he goes on and on to say why, but but you know my life would be have very little meaning in it if it didn't have the suffering. There's there's certain sufferings and things that, that we're meant to go through in our mission that we're here for. Um, you know, being a father, working in Haiti, these are things that for whatever reason are part of my life, and um, they're not always easy. But imagine if imagine if our Lord decided not to do what he's supposed to do and not and I'm not doing that it's you know it's too much and things to be a little bit different so I don't think we should be afraid of suffering I think it's a gift in a lot of ways especially if if that suffering is part of our love for another person the struggles we may totally. have to help that person in some ways you know uh, and our good friend David is a new father so uh, yes David congratulations buddy a nice baby girl but as, as our gospel today, Doug, and it's really a reminder to us that our Jesus was very human. And as we approach him, he's really going to suffer in many, many ways. And it's real, real genuine suffering and a lot of it. He's going to feel the pain in different ways. And, and I think we have to be aware of that ourselves. Uh, so anyway, I, I pray that you will always be there for others, especially people you love who may have lost someone, and you can say to them, hey, that person is and not was. I remember one time I was down there, so maybe 10 years ago or something, I said to you, hey, listen, you know, we've been doing this a long time. Maybe it's time for someone else to take over. You know, I think we put our time in, you know, we've earned our keep. And you said to me, we can't leave. I said, why not? You said to me, because they have nobody else, and it's what we're here for. So it was kind of, you know, Despite the suffering involved, it's, it's, it's work that we're meant to do. I've done a lot this week. You know, I, I, we're not, I'm not just trying to sing our own praises, but every organization has a band. They're, they're not even here. And even the water we give out, we, we have the only water wells. But Doctors Without Borders was willing to uh, come there, and they, they paid a person to, to kind of put some sort of, like, I don't know, chemical in order to make yeah, the water. Yeah, keep the water right, purify it, yep. But now they can't come back until it's safer. So now the people are back with the regular water and it's it's a little bit contaminated. But And they're a good group. It's just that you kind of wonder sometimes, you know. Uh, you, you, I almost feel sometimes I wouldn't mind just giving it all up, but we'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll be, we'll do it. But anyway, my good friends, uh, just just realize that our Lord is saying to you and to me today, you're going to live forever and I'll be with you. So God bless you and God love you. The Lord has told us also to come to him when we are in need and let us now present to him our needs. We pray for our Holy Father Francis. Pray to God you will care for him and watch over him today. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the situation here in Haiti. Uh, the last couple days have been really tough. So let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I pray for those who, I don't want to say they're being misunderstood, but I still think they can easily change. It would be someone like Barbecue, who's one of the top gang leaders, and some of the others. I honestly see some goodness in them, and I think there's a chance that they can change as well. So let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Any special attention, Stog, or anything you want to read out? Uh, David, you got some, right? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, please pray for Andrea, who's battling cancer, for Beth, Casey, and Colleen and their families, uh, for Dante, Laura, and Luann, uh, for the people of Haiti, for Holly, uh, Frisco, Dora, Kathy, Jackie, Michael, Danielle, Bart, Roberto, Rose, Charlotte, and Matt. Um, for please pray for us to have a blindness for our differences in eyes, only for all the little traits we share. For Bernstein, um, for Father Tom, um, please pray for David, Madeline, and their new baby girl. For Joanne, Nicole, um, for La Gloria Grillo, um, for Father Tom and Doug and the Hands Together team, and for Allison. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And of course, we pray for everyone who joined us today. Um, we have John Rouse here with us, Jim uh, Jim Leonard's and uh, and his lovely wife. My brother Matthew's here. Bobby Kaminsky's here. Professor Lammers, how are you? Uh, we have uh, Tony and Barbara Keene. Adeline Baird's here. Kathleen, Michelle Gilchrist. Hi, Michelle. Rose Marie. Peggy Henderson. Hi, Peg. Irish Glory. Well, I don't know who that is, Irish Glory. Wally and Noreen. Carol Tierney, of course, is here. Hi, Carol. Ed Cranston. Hi, Ed. Diane Zeifel, John, Jim Trowbridge, Catherine Kaur, Richard Ishman, Richard Loftus. Uh, we have Mike Monteleon is here. Hi, Michael, Monica, Essa, Sharon White, Ron Talizak. Hello, Ron. Carmel Gilmore, Cheryl, Phil McKinney. Hi, Phil and Barb. Bill Dwyer. Hi, Bill. Jan Noe. Hi, Jan. Ben, JB, Ann O'Donnell, Ann. Hi, John Buzang. Hi, John. Mary Nickerson, Daniel DeGrati, Peter Kovac. Jim. Hi, Pete. Mike DeWine. Hi, Governor. Uh, Dan, Janice Hutchinson, Sally Chappelle, Jean Cranston, Julia, William Skinner. Don't know who that is, but hi, William. David Hoffman. We have um, da, 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 David Hoffman. Where else we got? Uh, I think that's it. Marianne. Isabel Everhart. Uh, Tom Holcomb's here. Hi, Tom. Mary Brogan. Mary, how are you? Yeah, and Steve. Hello, Steve. Andrew Dubill. Barbara James. I think that's all of them, David. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. We pray for all of you. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you to hear these prayers and the prayers and cries of all people throughout the world, especially those cries for people who are struggling at the loss of a loved one. We offer our prayers with theirs in solidarity as we wait patiently for your loving consideration. We ask this in union with your Father and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
My good friends, let us pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Lord God, as we offer these simple gifts of bread and wine to you, we pray, Lord God, in imitation of you, that we will be able to reach out to our loved ones who are struggling, just as you reached out to Lazarus and, and, and Mary over, and, and her, over Lazarus' sickness and death. Help us, Lord, too, to, to be there for others in need, especially the time when they're losing a loved one. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your arms. We lift them up unto the Lord. Lord our God. It is right and just. It's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on a cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. And this he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join now with the angels and saints of old as we sing together. for these gifts we bring by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries on the night he was betrayed he gathered his friends about him he looked at them that night and he loved them and he took bread blessed it and broke it gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in the same way he took a cup that night blessed it gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and drink from it for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in this body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bishop Messidor, Archbishop Buren, Port-au-Prince, and all the priests and bishops throughout the world. Remember all the people who struggle here in Haiti. And remember those who are participating in the violence. Remember barbecue. Remember Gabrielle. Remember Sanson. All the leaders. And remember those who have died and have left us. Remember especially David. Remember Dr. Lutz. Remember Reginald's brother who died, was killed this week. Bring them and all into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with St. Francis de Sales and St. Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. Through him, with him, and him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My good friends, let us now pray to a Father who loves us all, and anu la in, in Creole. Our Father who art in heaven, that will be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not into temptation. Deliver us, we beg you, Lord, from every evil. And your mercy keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, and my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but upon our faith and our good will and the love and the beauty that's in each and every one of us, and lead each of us to that kingdom someday where we will live forever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. In solidarity with Jesus who reached out to his friends, to Martha and Mary, supported them and actually wept with them. Help us in some ways to be able to do the same thing, Lord. So let us demonstrate our willingness to do that now as we share our peace and friendship with one another. Peace to all of you here. God bless you.
Jesus is our best friend and our constant companion, the source of the grace and the strength we need to take each step on our life's journey. Behold now the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and happy and privileged we are to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to descend under your roof, but only say the word and our soul shall be healed. <laughs> My good friends, let us end with a prayer. Lord God, as we end this Mass, we pray, Lord God, that you will bring peace to this troubled land, this troubled country. Help us to be able to see the goodness and beauty in all people. Help us to be able to listen to one another and help us to support one another. But above all, Lord, please protect all the people here. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. My good friends, before uh, we have a little bit, we want to just show a little video on the water. But I don't know if my good friend Doug's there yet. I'm right here, buddy. What I want you to do is tell the story. I have some little stories we're going to tell too about uh, stories? the one. Tell the one, and this really happened about the uh, Undertaker here. Oh boy. The guy came in. Tell it now. Yeah. So one of the things we do uh, with our staff in the, in the schools is if, if, if someone in the immediate family dies, we, we provide funeral services. So one of our teachers dies and we, we send them to the undertaker and we pay him, pay him well to get the body ready for the funeral. And here you have it that the undertaker wakes up. He wasn't dead. I mean, the, the staff wakes up. He wasn't dead. And so the undertaker, having taken our money and all, kills him and gets him ready for the funeral. And when we got we got angry that all the people were saying, "What are you getting mad at him for? He's just doing his job." So that's that's the mentality we're dealing with a little bit. I asked you to tell that story, Doug, because the day with with Lazarus dying, all this every every culture has its own way of looking at death. But uh, down here, I I couldn't believe the Undertaker could take that person's oh, life. They all thought he did the right thing. I know. But, <laughs> what are you, you yelling at him for? 
I can remember as a young priest, maybe just a year ordained, I was working in, in Philadelphia in a really tough blue collar neighborhood. And at that time, all the wakes were held in the houses. They didn't usually have the funeral parlors that much. And I can remember pulling up to one of the wakes and uh, it happened all the time. But as soon as the people saw the priest coming, they'd all be running out of the house because they didn't want to get stuck with a rosary. I was really true. They'd all be <laughs> Then another another time, uh, and it, it was a tough neighborhood. But I can remember getting a call after midnight one time, and a lady said, "Father, our Joe just died. Could you come over? Our family's really upset, and they, they they need your advice." So I go over, and it's a little house. It's a little kitchen at back. They're all sitting on the kitchen table, and the mother said, "Father, you know Joe. My Joe loved his beer." And we're, we're struggling now. We don't know if we should put canned beer in his coffin or <laughs> bottled beer. I said, oh, I think bottled beer is classier. You know, we thought so, too. Sure enough, at the wake, he's laid out with all the, all the uh, beer around his whole body in a coffin. Only in Philly, Tom. Only in Philly. I'm at the, I'm at the wake, and it was towards the end. And I went inside, looked up, and there's smoke coming out of the coffin. Somebody oh, must have been Cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> but I can another another time I remember uh, going into the house and it's always a little awkward if they don't know who you are and a, the poor widow is sitting there next to the coffin and I go in and I go uh, I'm Father Tom Hagen I'm actually from Northeast Catholic High School I'm really sorry about your husband and honestly Doug and everybody I can't repeat what she said but she came out with some really tough <laughs> language. <laughs> Yeah, she caught it, pointed in the coffin. She said, "Father, that sob deserved everything he got." And I go, "Oh yes, definitely, definitely, that's true." You know, I'm like agreeing with her. I'm walking out. I, I think, "What am I doing here?" But uh, I know another time there was a monsignor in Philly. And we used to call him Genghis Khan. He was really tough. And then one time we we were going to Holy Sepulchre Cemetery up there in Philadelphia. And we pull up in the limousine with the undertaker, and he says, we got to get this over with quick. So he gets out of the limousine, he walks up to the grave and falls in, accidentally fell in. And I'm like standing over the grave, like trying to push the dirt in, acting uh, upset. Monsignor, are you okay? He was all right, but uh, anyway, it was, I, I never, I, we think of all those, those stories. Another time up in Maniunk, the undertaker, the uh, Paul Burrs, it was a, icy day, rain, a snow, and they slipped on the ice, and the coffin fell down on the gr ground and started going down the street, sliding down the street on its own. So it's all these different stories I think of as funerals. Actually, uh, looking back over my life, a lot of those funerals were really funny, the, the things that happened in them, you know. But anyway, enough said. Uh, I was, though we have a, a little bit of a video, not much of the people getting water. And this is a well we, we we got this well uh drill yes, that, so we drilled that uh, many years ago it's probably one of the only wells in city soleil because it's just very hard to drill there yeah and, and we now have dug 650 wells with that and they estimate about 720,000 people get fresh water not to but mention we, all the different we have a lot of irrigation wells so about 50 of those are pretty good irrigation wells for the farmers but but the well we dug in City Slay, we realized wasn't good. The water wasn't that good, and we never dug any more. But that's the only well they have now. And yeah, they can't people, drink it, but they can use you know they can cook with it, they boil it, they can they can they can wash with it, things like that, clean. So all day long, there's coming with the buckets, and I would estimate at least maybe five or six thousand people come every day with buckets. Wow. But I don't know if David can show that or not. He's showing it now, Tommy. Here it is. I'm sorry. They bring the little yellow. Yeah, that's really held up really well. We've had that a long time. It's it's a good it's a good well. That they go all night long too, and during the night they're coming for the water. Now we have two other wells too, Doug. They dug by hand, and they are getting some water out of that too. Where are those? The hardest part right now, we can't get food into a lot of those places. Our We've last been week taking we're... food in like three trips a day for the last two weeks, but it's just about. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get get some food in this week. 
Well, there's not many other people doing that, is there? Yeah. What's that? There's not many other groups doing that. Is, is there bringing food in? Well, I'm not just trying to sing our praises. As far as I know, there's no other group at all. That's what I thought, yeah. Now, Who's what that? happened? Our latest school we just built uh, is in the area where uh, Barbecue lives. Barbecue is Barbecue's a big gang leader, but every day he came, and he was really proud of this school. And a lot of his, uh, what he calls them, soldiers, uh, they helped rebuild build that school. And on Friday night, there was a big battle between the police and them, and at least uh, quite a few of them got killed. So that's kind of hard. Yeah. Also, I want to call Reginald over. Reginald's brother just died. Oh, boy, killed. I'm sorry, Reg. Come on, you lot. When I'm in regret, when trees for free, we're going to do that. 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 Police are going to kill him. Just tell him I'm sorry about his brother and I, I feel his pain. When I'm in San Jiro, we're not going to do that. We're going to kick him in. Reginald's been really good. Every night he stays up all night watching, guarding us. Yeah, we've got a couple extra people in the house at night to uh, we find out that we have food in the neighborhood. It would be kind of treacherous for us. It's a wash, but <laughs> a wash in Creole means yellow belly chicken. He really isn't. Yeah. But he's one thing he's not. He's probably one of the toughest, toughest people I know. But anyway, anybody, I don't know if you want to say anything. Say anything else. There's a lot of people here today. There's about 60 people that came to join us. A lot of people are concerned about you, I'm sure. And I hope you're not entertaining any stupid things about how to get out of there. I apologize. Today, I, I, I usually try to put myself into it more i think this week is really kind of wearing on me a little bit but uh, nothing to be sorry it's, for it's, it's, have mass and uh i i hope i didn't cut up my fellow irishman too much i was telling him doug that we love to suffer irish people yeah yeah and all about it and we also love sad stories like well, my irish about that too my irish grandmothers used to read the obituaries like people read the comics i mean she would be all excited over the obituaries they really tell me at a retreat and, uh, and we're going around and people are kind of like Praying for different people who are more tragic than the next one. And uh and Jim Callery said something that you know that the sister trumped him. Do you remember that? Yeah. But that's a, that's a typical Irish competition right there. I know. But anyway, uh it was just just good being with you and really pray for us. Actually last night though, I got a call around nine. Somebody wanted to kick me out in a helicopter, the embassy. Yeah, you you show you showed that to me, yeah. You, I'm surprised you didn't take him up on it. He'll probably be there the next six months. They said three o'clock. I got three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. They said no in the morning. I got well. I got mass for the sisters. I don't know. Oh, if you have a chance to get out of there, three o'clock. It doesn't matter when it is. Well, I'll see what happens. But anyway, thank you, Doug. And by no, the no, way, no, 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 thank you. It's Doug's birthday on Wednesday, so it's his big birthday. So uh, anyway. Great being with you. Uh, I apologize if our mass wasn't all together this week so much. Uh, There's going to be, we're going to send you guys an a, 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 a evaluation form that they can send it in. All right. Anyway, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, wish us luck because now in a few minutes, Doug, I'm heading down in the city of Soleil, so. Just take it easy, okay? Calm down. Huh? Just calm down a little bit. Take it easy. All right. All anyway, right. we love you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tommy.